It's because it's art, Teresa. It has nothing to do with this. <laughs> like, like, no figure needs to cost eight hundred dollars. No figure needs to cost three hundred dollars. These figures don't cost that much to make. It's all hype and what people are willing to pay. You just gave away the formula on how to make a designer toy, George. Teresa, are you there? I'm sure something happened at her house. Like the power went out, the dog ran away. <laughs> the house burned down. <laughs> she had to get fruit roll-up snacks. <laughs> Where is she? Her neighbor died again. Yeah, the neighbor's dead. She's taking the neighbor to the hospital. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know, we're recording right now. This is a pretty good little intro. <laughs> oh, there she is. She just logged in. Okay. Let me add her. Is the leftover Halloween candy eaten Teresa there? Yes. Okay. All right, so we got a full house. Let's just go ahead and do this before we waste too much time. So, three, two, one. Hey, toy family. This is the Marsham Toy Hour, where we discuss anything and everything designer toys. I'm Gary Ham. I'm Teresa Hawkins. I'm George Gaspar. And, and I'm Andrew Bell. And you are. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to say that again? No, we're good. You've been on the show before. You just come in now like a friend of the show. We don't have to interview you. We can just talk about anything and everything this time. I'm sleeping on your couch. Well, well, welcome. And Andrew, I know last week we talked quite a bit about you and your intolerant lactose cereal, which for anyone who's not familiar is basically a – it's a – It's a not-so-subtle parody to the Funko cereals that Funko's doing, and they're going to have a big booth called Saturday Mornings at Designer Con selling a bunch of cereal products. So Andrew did his little parody based on that, and we talked about it at length last week. So, Andrew, I'm curious. Like, we kind of went into what we think the metaphors were and the hidden messages and all that sort of stuff. So I'm curious. Like, did we nail it? How do we do? That was a quality 45 minutes of (laughs) overanalyzing. It's a serious, in-depth dive into what is essentially an elaborate poop joke. Ah, it's much more than a poop joke. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I know. You can't say there's not a sprinkling of Funko Haterade in there. I mean, there's a little friendly jab here and there. I've I've got some opinions. (laughs) But I, I think it really set some people off in a way that I did not expect. There's some very sensitive Funko collectors out there. I think it may have been the trolling you were doing in the comments. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that was just too easy. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you, I, I was reading those comments, and you were being kind of coy about what, you know, the actual message or what you're trying to say behind it was. <laughs> yeah. Or you're like, what's Funko? <laughs> it's like Andrew, come on. Is that Freddy Funko? Uh, no, it's Larry Lactose. This has this looks nothing like Freddy. It's obvious his hair is parted in the opposite direction. <laughs> That's all it takes and to get he, past it, right? Yeah, he's like 40 pounds heavier. <laughs> Can't possibly, Freddie. No, well, no. I it's, enjoyed it's, it. It was, it was a fun week. Thanks for entertaining me. <laughs> Thank you for digging into it more than anyone ever should have. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do here. Yeah, we are not respectable reporters. We just, just <laughs> go, go at it how we see fit. I was bummed that... Uh, <laughs> that George wasn't around to weigh in on that one. A lot of people were. George, you want to weigh in? George, weigh in now. What did you think? Did you listen to last week's episode? Uh, I did, but I, it was like a week ago. I can't remember anything now. <laughs> oh, Lord. George is like a fruit fly. <laughs> a 24-hour lifespan? Yeah. Anything that happened two days ago is, is just gone. I don't understand why somebody wants to hear my complaint just because they just want to hear what they're thinking out loud. Is that what it is? <laughs> Yeah. Speak your mind, George. I I have no problem with the with the box of cereal you made. I, I think it was funny. I think it's I don't what do they want to hear me rail against Funko? Because I'm not going to do that. Ah, uh, and I think in the meantime, it has been uh, my prophecies about Decon being cereal con have come true. I think we've seen a lot of announcements. <laughs> There's well, I wouldn't call it cereal con because it's one out of seven. You know what? There's there are going to be a lot of cereal boxes out there walking around. So maybe, I, I, maybe that's appropriate. But uh, as far as predicting it, you absolutely nailed it. You, got, you knew the box was going to be yellow. You knew there was going to be a little enamel pin on the inside. Like, if I didn't know better, I would say you had a uh, little insider information on this. I had no idea. I just basically made up my own thing and uh, 
I just knew there was going to be cereal there and it was kind of funny and I thought it was a little silly and there's like a, a weird way to shoehorn Funko into everything. I mean, I really don't care that much. I just thought it would be funny to make a little commentary on it. I hope people enjoy it. And I mean, so far they've seen the, uh, the box and the pin and there, there is an addition to that. You always have something up your sleeve, Andrew. Are you going to tell us what it is or are you going to make us guess or beg? I'll tell you that, yeah. There's a resin figure that goes along with the first 10 boxes. It's a five inches tall, and it's uh, the mascot in a bowl of cereal barfing milk. And uh, don't worry, hater haters, the crown is optional. It comes right off as a magnet. Oh, nice. We like <laughs> the magnet feature. That's that's always fun. Yeah, so, you know, if, if it's too much like your favorite character which is completely original and not a complete ripoff of any existing mascots you can take that crown off and feel good about yourself uh did you sculpt this and cast it yourself yeah it was a digital sculpt i did it in zbrush and uh took the time to explore a few new methods of production so i, I used uh, my 3d printer for the master but i also used it for a uh, mother mold and oh. I used it for some spray masks, which is something I haven't done before. That's pretty clever, huh. actually. Yeah, it was having the the sculpts in digital opens up like a whole new world. What is a mother mold? So a mother mold is a hard shell that goes around the silicone mold, and it's usually to keep its shape. It's usually when you have a shape that's very irregular, you'll do either a brush on mold, uh, which is also sometimes called a glove mold. So it's a very thin layer of silicone, so you can turn it inside out and you don't have to waste a ton of silicone making a giant block mold where half of it is just filling up space. And okay. uh, the mother mold is the hard shell that goes around that and keeps the shape of the mold when you're pouring the resin into it. In this case, I printed the hard shell on the outside and I had the master on the inside and I poured the silicone in between instead of brushing it on. So I got a perfect mother mold and a perfect silicone mold. It was an interesting experiment. It was a lot of fussing around with uh, ZBrush and the settings because they're all kind of arbitrary, but it worked out pretty well. That sounds pretty awesome. I mean, I don't fully yeah. understand everything that you're saying, but it sounds pretty cool. And are you doing everything in ZBrush now? Um, not 100% of the time, but I'm getting that direction. I still love grabbing the, uh, the old monster clay and, and doing some stuff quickly or just doing some prototypes or mock-ups with some plastiline or something, but... It's just it makes it so much easier to do other things with the sculpt when you're done, other than having to re-sculpt it every time. And uh, using the uh, the model as the basis for a spray mask was was really great. A uh, few of them didn't work out. I had to fuss around and print a few slight different sizes because when you're casting the resin, of course, it shrinks down a little bit, so it's not exactly one to one to your oh, model right. size. So I printed out one that was like three percent smaller, one that was five percent smaller, one that was seven percent smaller, just to see what the exact fit would be. And, uh, yeah, I got, I got some good results at it. Nice. I like that. I never, never even thought about doing that from 3D printing. Yeah, it's, it has saved me at least 10 hours of masking taping <laughs> at this point. No, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll post some pictures of the process after I, uh, I tease the images of the figure itself. So you mentioned there's 10 of these. So you sculpted, casted, painted. You did everything yourself. So I imagine they're going to be a, a little spendy. So what's the price going to be? Yeah, there they were a lot of work, so it'll probably be in the like a two fifty three hundred range. I haven't I haven't nailed down completely yet, but they'll be up there. Okay. Yeah, but they they are some of my finest resin pouring to date. Nice. <laughs> no, I did mention I'm lactose intolerant at times. Yes. When I when I think I can drink that shake, and maybe it was a little too large of a shake, and I get the stomach cramps and the fun of lactose intolerance. And I suggested you doing a chocolate colorway. Is is that potential for the future? <laughs> oh. That that is a future potential. Of course, that was on my mind when I was making that. And uh, <laughs> you know, it's 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 uh, it's. I thought about doing something much worse than it ended up being. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, but I, I wanted to keep kind of fun and lighthearted and, and a little cute. I am also incredibly lactose intolerant. It's very not fun. Ah, uh, you unlucky man! Yeah, well, it's not fun at all. It's absolute misery. But I, do you plan to have any to follow it up with a second cereal like intolerant? gluten nose or anything like that <laughs> i like gluten so yeah maybe S something for george to relate to <laughs> yeah george are you gluten intolerant i am and that's the that's uh, the worst part of all this cereal release i don't even get to try it 
I can't even. I don't even know how you do it, George, because I eat cereal almost. It's how I start up my morning. I usually eat it straight out of the box on the drive to work. You know, I'll get to work and everyone's lined up at the coffee machine because they're all grumpy and they they can't start their day until they get coffee. I'm that way with like most of my my cereal. That's how I do it. And uh, oh, speaking of which, with grumpy, this is this is something you don't know about, Andrew. Like uh, Teresa, myself, and George sometimes will group text, and Teresa and I we were. <laughs> to say that we were sour would, would be putting it nicely because um, we could have used a Snickers bar because we, we definitely were not ourselves. We were wanting to do a designer con episode this week, so we're you know we're staying really focused for artist releases and what was going on, but we just weren't getting enough of what we thought was like you know what we could talk about in the show. We were seeing mainly the big store, big like you know booth stuff like Jurassic Park and the panels were going to be movie studio like Netflix stuff and there were like some sneaker product things with um Sneaker Lab and there was going to be a Pizza Planet photo op truck and it just it just wasn't what we were expecting and hoping for, which is a lot of licensed stuff. Cowboy Bebop Oh, the Cowboy Bebop video. Like, oh, we got a special delivery. Look at all these Cowboy <laughs> Bebop merchandise. It's just, it was just, I don't know. It was bumming me out seeing all this sort of stuff that I didn't necessarily see as like independent producer type stuff. And But now you go look at Designer Con Instagram feed and it's it's being hammered with all this independent and designer stuff. So now it's looking more like the convention that we all kind of expected it to be. Well, I think that also speaks to the fact that the artists releasing their images are typical artists and we are all very late and last minute with everything we're working on so we've been seeing the big company stuff because they're organized and they have schedules and the rest of us are scrambling to finish as much <laughs> as possible and post it as soon as it's done yes and we knew that going in though because for, for those not familiar we record on the thursday before the monday release so we're actually eight days ahead of the opening night of designer con so we're ahead of the game for most of the news coming out, but we are hoping to see at least some more company toy releases and more. know more about the Medicom pavilion going on there or the Pop Life pavilion. We heard there's a stage in the center of that pavilion, so that would have been nice to know a little more about that before record. But uh, what we have seen, we have seen more images and leaks of the Kid Robot uh, Designer Con Dundee series, and George, that series is looking really nice. Yeah, those look good. Nice yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just seeing them for the first time, finished images the same time you're seeing them for the first time. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'm so that one. changes that the changes all worked out, you know, that things are, the, you know, it's, it's good to see that they actually listened to the comments from the artists and, you know, made the changes that we needed. So it was, it's, it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with them all so far. Can I ask you a question about it, George? Sure. I noticed one of them is a, re- is a repeat of a dunning that they've done in the past, the deaf big mouth. What was the decision behind redoing that you know, for the series? You haven't seen it yet. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> no, I have they seen have it. No, I saw images of it today. Mean? It looks like the mouth is now sculpted. It's going to be glow in the dark. It looks awesome. But was did that they the post s- that image? I they did. S- they did. did. Yeah. Who did? Toy Chronicle. Where'd they get it? I don't know. Let's see. Is it on the uh, Kid Robot? Not on the Kid Robot page. Well, let's see. Because it, yeah, uh, yeah, they posted an article. It says, oh, it says TTC exclusive. Big Mouth Returns. Oh, oh. Well, that's nice. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks fantastic. Is that is that the sole reason for redoing it? Have giving it a sculpted mouth and just making uh, it look better? Basically, that's that's my favorite dunny oh, uh, yeah so i asked if we i asked ben if we could get deaf back in the series and revisit it because it's the thing i've always wanted oh okay. i always wanted that dunny as a sculpted piece and i always just thought it should be like it was so stupid that it was just this big painted face um even though it's still my, it was my favorite dunny out of all of them um so it was it was kind of the one that i i kind of went to bat for and was hoping we'd be able to get nice I, now I'd like to see what the pictures look like, so I'll have to look that up. I'm bummed that I'm the last one to be able to see it. <laughs> <laughs> George, I'll copy a link and paste it in our chat for you. It's always fun to see the uh, final version of something for the first time when you open the package of the final product that is on the shelves. <laughs> I'm always a little worried about that when that stuff comes in. Like The package will arrive from overseas, and it's almost like a Christmas gift for me. I just... I'm almost a little afraid to actually open it. Like, well, you, that's a healthy fear because you've been through the whole process. You know, 
that your final sample quote unquote pictures aren't always what it comes out looking like no. when you get it delivered. No. And one of the worst stages for me, Andrew, is this is something you're probably not familiar with, Teresa, but a lot of times when you work with other companies, you go through the stages of approval and you might get one or two, but eventually uh, you'll get to like maybe the third review where you're under the time crunch. And at this point, this is where you just need to just approve the thing already. But if there's something that you need changed, you need to basically do it by what's called approved with changes and you're basically trusting the factory to make the change at that point you don't get to see a final sample for a final pass and uh that's always a little scary and usually it turns out okay but not always the case the fun part is when a factory sends you a sample then they outsource the production after that oh, to some other factory that almost, it's almost illegal to me it shouldn't be allowed <laughs> what when has that happened it happens all the time yeah and they don't have to tell you <laughs> awkward silence i guess i'll go again so andrew i know you're a big fan of takashi mirakami and last week we were talking about that complex con was just in la over the weekend and i know he had several toy releases i've been to your place i've seen that you collect them so did you end up finding a mule to pick up those pieces for you <laughs> no they were i think there were 80 that they managed to finish of the uh oh, pieces of the kai kai and the kiki and then they were on ebay you know the next two hours and they were up to three to five thousand dollars and the people people were paying that so uh, yeah that Jesus. that was beyond me yeah, yeah. I, and i know was... people haven't gotten their ones from last year yet either i like those ones i didn't get a chance to get Are on you those. Serious? I, I managed, yeah i managed to get a, a mr dobb from uh, two years ago and that's that's gonna have to do i had no idea that's a long wait it is. I think they're shipping your back now. Is this the know. one where they released them and they realized there was quality control issues and they had to redo it? No, that was the one from two years ago. The one oh. last year they kind of pre-sold, but then they never delivered. Huh. I think this was just way too complicated. I don't know if you've seen it. It's uh, sort of the octopus with the open mouth and a bunch of teeth and tons oh, of that tentacles. One. Yeah, yeah that it, one looks... it looks like a production nightmare, especially to the standards they're probably going to want it at. Right. Well, they should have had Unbox do it. They, they seem to know <laughs> what they're doing. They like the, the complex stuff. But from what I saw, I, so leading up to DesignerCon, when Teresa and I were talking about ComplexCon, like we, she actually had no idea. She, I guess she had missed seeing any mention of ComplexCon. But over the weekend, I couldn't escape it. It seemed like a lot of people in L.A. were there. And George, did you go? I saw Ben went. Uh, no, I, uh, I did not go. It's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of like a hype fest show. Yeah, like, it's not really it's for like me. That. It's not – it's, it's – it's not really my kind of thing. I don't. I don't care about sneakers. I don't care about what toy is hype. I don't. Right. I buy things because I like them, not because someone tells me it's hype. Okay, I gotcha. But from what I can tell from last year's event, it looks like the number of art toys being made for the event looks like it quadrupled. It looks like I saw quite a few. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of people there who would normally be decon people that are now there instead. Oh, they've switched. Well, I don't know if they switched or if they'll do both or what, but there's like guys like, well, like, like Matt Gondak, who is, you know, doing a figure with 3D Retro, has a release at ComplexCon and is not even going to be at Decon. He has an art show. He has an excuse. He's going to be in like Hong Kong or something at some, at its art show, but it's weird, you know? Yeah, because I know he did all the, the Disney badges for like all the different badge types. So yeah, I kind of thought he'd be there. Yeah, but... I mean, I did see, I guess, more news, Gary, for Complex Con after the fact, after we recorded, but none of it really spoke to me anyway, just for my aesthetic. So it, it's more of like a high art con, right? Like, where, like people are spending like a ton of money on on pieces, like that. I think that Gondek figure was what three fifty or something like that. Yeah, oh, Lord, three hundred bucks, three fifty. Well, it was like it's more of like an art, an art thing, not just like right. not just designer like street toys. Well, and like the, so we talked about that uh, Warner Brothers Rocket by Eric So, Gary. Yep. Did you know that it was priced at 800 bucks? What? <laughs> How many pieces? It was up for pre order, so I think it was. Just open, open edition, edition like at whatever. 800 bucks? Holy uh, yeah. Crap. So. I'm, I'm doing but something I, wrong. And I think someone was talking about how, well, it might be because each character required a separate license, which may have bumped up the price potentially. 
But still, no, it just shocked me. That. It's because it's art, Teresa. It has nothing to do with this. <laughs> like, like, no figure needs to cost $800. No figure needs to cost $300. These figures don't cost that much to make. It's all hype and what people are willing to pay. It's art, and now you're paying for the art. Andrew, you're, you're pricing your stuff way too considerably, affordably. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, those, I'll change. Those kill cats, bump them up to about 250 per pup. Oh, yeah, I should whoa. just take the average eBay price and, uh, and apply there that to all future yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Andrew, speaking of eBay, I got to ask. Have you seen that random kill cat listing? With yeah, so, all some of guy those is posting crazy... all these random customs, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so there's like a a fire and ice and a, a wild or magic mushroom and I forget what else, but there's all these insane fake kill cats posted out there. They're customs that people are selling on eBay. Yeah, well, what he's doing is he's he made a bunch of customs and then he's selling some of the production ones and he keeps listing them while showing pictures of all the customs. So he's kind of using the eBay listings as like a low key way to advertise his customs. <laughs> How weird. If you go to eBay and search Kill Cats, you will see it's a listing, and you can go and look. Uh, and I'll save one of these pictures out so we can post it somehow. But you can just see, okay, he's got Carolina Reaper Pepper, Dragon Breath, Wolf Spain. And I've gotten like a dozen messages saying, are, are, did I miss these? Are these out yet? You know, like, <laughs> are these real? And I have to be like, no, 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 they're not, they're not real. And it's annoying because some of those might have already been in my idea book <laughs> oh man i just have to do them better that's that's the only yeah you can do that challenge but so, i'm yeah, just I curious just, if you had seen it because i started yeah, seeing got, that people were like oh have you all seen these i'm like those aren't his <laughs> yeah it got it got sent to me you, you can tell because the rappers are all like the regular red rapper with a sticker or something on top of them you're doing a lot of colorways for the kill cat how many are, are you up to so far i think we're up to nine at this point okay it's been out for what a year now Last design, yeah, designer con is when I feel like I saw it for the first time. Yeah, it's been about a year, so it's, it's uh, maybe a little longer, maybe a year and a half or so. I, I can't remember exactly, but is there still more coming? Then it sounds like there is. Oh, you know, there, there's how many hundred different flavors of Kit Kats <laughs> at this do? point? <laughs> I gotta keep up with it. Uh oh, you hear that, Nick? <laughs> hundreds, hundreds. <laughs> nah, it's not that bad, but uh, there there will be some more coming. Yes. And we saw that you're doing an exclusive. You did an exclusive colorway with Fye, and recently this week you did a release with a new store. I'm not actually familiar with Nerdy Collectibles, but there sounds like you're doing a lot of exclusives with stores too. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to split them out between uh, exclusives for myself, exclusives for stores, and then just uh, retailer releases. Uh, it's tough because I'm keeping them pretty small runs, so getting them out to retailers, everyone gets you know five or six of them. It's it's. Yeah, it's not great for the retailers either because they're going to get a lot of complaints. So uh, I'm going to have to either do store exclusives or bump up the numbers a bit. Right. Now, Andrew, I got to say, I looked up Nerdy Collectibles, and you're giving Funko a hard time about walls of pops <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Nerdy Collectibles, their Instagram account, looks like it's 95% Funko Pops. So you're putting your Kill Cat in a store that probably exists because of Funko Pops. That's a little weird. Yeah. I mean, FYE sells a lot of pops too. They do. This is how you can tell that I didn't care that much. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's. <laughs> um, that was arranged by my distributor, so I didn't take full credit for that uh, exclusive listing. But at the same time, you know, whatever it takes for these stores to stay in business, I get it. Like I'm, I'm not mad that they have to sell pops. I'm just a little bummed that their budget and their store space, if it's a physical store where they used to have independent productions, has now been reallocated to all these licensed properties. Whereas I used to be able to go into a store and find some weird stuff from some weird artists. It's like now that is near impossible in a lot of stores. So, you know, the, a lot of these stores, they're carrying a lot of other people's stuff. And Nerdy Collectibles, they carry my stuff. They carry some other artist stuff. They carry a lot of designer vinyl on top of the pops. Right. Uh, FYE too, they're doing a lot of Ron English stuff and they're getting more into the artist-driven stuff. Uh, but it's just when you go to conventions and it's just booth after booth and wall of pops and you go to a former little comic shop where it was weird little indie stuff and now it's just pops, pops, pops. Like that right. bugs me. And I'm not, I, I understand, but it gets to me sometimes. Now you just mentioned the FYE is you know starting to get more into the artist side of toys. Like up to this point, they've been doing pretty much pop culture or just recognized 
recognizable culture items along with the toys like SpongeBob. And I would even say your Kill Cat. You know, you, anyone who's familiar with chocolate candy bars and you know a Kit Kat can relate to your toy. But I've recently yeah. this is the first week where I've seen an actual art toy that they're going to have an exclusive colorway of that really, from what I can tell, has no relation to pop culture. And that is Jermaine Rogers. I'm not even sure what the title of it. I think it's called Choices, or but it's like the, it's the rabbit holding the knife. So that's mm-hmm. going that's going to be an FYE exclusive. I think that's really the first time that I know of FYE is actually doing like like an original more art toy that someone walking in off the street into their stores and the malls probably wouldn't recognize and have like a instant relationship with. Well, Gary, if you love me enough, you'd know that they also picked up the glow in the dark Kurochi san this summer. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't no, think people would know who Jermaine Rogers is though as the as a as like in a music type store? Is that why you music store? Honestly, or? George, I I'm familiar with his toys, but I don't like follow him as a is he a musician as well? I have no he's idea. He's a rock he's a rock poster. He's a poster artist. Like God. <laughs> see, I, I don't know that. He's he's yeah. like he's like Kozik level, like poster artist, like huge. Okay. New to me. So yeah, I mean, I'm about to, someone off the street, just the average Joe walking into a store, are they going to know that though? Maybe. I yeah, mean, I I, it, it's still a safe. It's it's a safer bet for them than saying having like my stuff in there for sure. If if he's a very popular, well known poster artist, yeah, it's definitely going to be have a greater outreach than probably trying out with you know some of the other designers in the scene for sure. Yeah, but at least they're expanding because I mean, we talked about Fye recently and how it's been pretty heavy licensed and really recognizable stuff so hopefully it means they're gonna keep spreading you know yeah no that'd be fabulous i love the idea of them selling original stuff and that's only gonna bring more eyes into our scene so that's awesome yeah however i am a little weary and a little concerned about the landscape for our potential designer toy stores in the next two to three to five years that these stores are really start taking off. And Andrew, I know you are, you're still selling and giving exclusive colorways to both boutiques and these other types of stores, the bigger box stores. But um, I'm a little concerned what happens going forward if they start really taking off because those bigger stores are going to be ordering more from the companies and artists. They're going to be ordering units of 300 to 1,000 of something versus the smaller stores are going to be only wanting 50 to 100 units of something. So it's a big difference. So hopefully the artists and companies still want to work with the boutiques and instead of shunning them out altogether. So I hope that doesn't happen because our designer toy stores, they're having a tougher time today. A lot of the artists are selling stuff direct. The there's not being much wholesale stuff offered to them. They're having to go overseas for a lot of imports, and those imports, they are not very great profit margins for them. So I hope the landscape isn't changed too much. Yeah, well, I, th- I think for me, them buying three hundred of something allows me to pay for the hundred of something run, you know, sure. to offer to another store. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, and it's it's definitely seems to be a trend that some of the more heavily pop stores are delving into our scene because there was another company called Pop Geek Collectibles, and um, they actually sold a few course pieces. So the Ruffle and Toast, the little pigeons eating a piece of bread, um, one of the colorways is a SDC, SDCC colorway, but they actually sold them, and I actually ended up buying – mine from them because it was cheaper than buying uh from like a playhouse or someone overseas so it's definitely spreading a bit i guess we'll just have to to see what that where that goes that's but, good i mean from when we first started the show two and a half years ago designer toys was i don't know i wouldn't say it was on the way out but it was definitely low-key but it seems like since we've been doing this two and a half years later i would say designer toys are scorching again they seem to be doing really well especially in asia asia is booming yeah. But I would say stateside, we're in a much, much better place than where we were two and a half years ago. Thank God for Funko. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, so Andrew, you're talking about how you don't like some of the stores, you know, building up their walls with licensed product and all that sort of stuff. So Designer Con is this week. So how do you feel about some of the, you know, I guess FYE? And we just saw that Direct um, DC Direct is now going to have a booth selling like DC – property lines at the convention and stuff like that so and the jurassic park booth a universal booth like do you have any feelings towards designer con opening themselves up to the larger companies coming in 
I mean, I think it's fun as long as they're engaging with artists, which is what Designer Con's always been about. As long as they have the designers putting their spin on their properties, like that's great. I don't mind seeing that stuff. I think that's what DC did really well is they they basically reached out to the artists that were at Decon and said, We want to work with you people to make this cool stuff. So exactly. Like, yeah. You artists come work on our property and that's what makes it amazing. Whereas you take somebody else who's just making pop culture things and getting an in-house artist that doesn't have the freedom to do anything. Like that's one of the things that I find lacking in those Funko cereal boxes, not to keep going back to Funko, but I think that they're just lacking inspiration. Like it just basically says Skeletor and then it's a picture of Skeletor in a bowl of cereal. And it's like, <laughs> there's no like cleverness. There's nothing like, he didn't try and come up with a cool name. Like it literally just says the name of the thing that's inside of it. How do you skeletons? Red, Red Ranger. Right. It doesn't, no, it's not, it's not like Red Ranger O's or something. It's like, that's not clever, but like, it's not even that. It's just, it literally just says Red Ranger is inside this box. And then there's a picture of the Red Ranger and a cereal. Yeah, but George, you know, <laughs> as working and licensing, that's probably. But that's what I'm saying. If you're yeah. going to bother doing this and you're going to try and call it art, then tell the company, like, look, like, cause look, obviously a brand like DC knows, look, if we're going to do this art stuff, we need to, we need to have a little freedom with the character. We need to be able to open it up to interpretation, to this artist interpretation. You don't, you don't hire Tracy Tubera to draw Darth Vader and then make him draw Darth Vader on model. You'd make him draw, you let him draw his version of Darth Vader. Like that's, you know, you, you let these people, like you're going to have him draw Batman. It's not going to be. Batman from the comic book. It's going to be Tracy Tubera's Batman with sneakers on, you know, and it's going to be cool. Like, there's no point in doing this art-related thing and then taking the art out of it. Right. And I absolutely hear what you're saying, George. I, I completely do. But as far as Funko goes, they're not an art toy company. They never have been. They've never been trying to be. They always said they're a pop culture collectible company that does affordable collectibles. They want to reach all the pop culture enthusiasts. They've never said they're designer toys. They never said they're doing art toys. So like, why is our scene talking about? Why is our scene concerned with it? Because they're not trying to be in our arenas. Like, I, I never understood that. Like, I want to stop talking about Funbuco because they're not our thing. They're not trying to be us and do designer stuff. Yes, and that's the thing. Like, they're not, they're not they they basically trick Ben, in my opinion. Like they're trying to say, like, look, we're gonna have the artists here. It's gonna be art related. There's gonna be art on the cereal box. And then they didn't do any of that. They didn't get. They didn't let the artists do. I'm sure those artists are probably dying to do cooler things than that. Like they don't want to just redraw Skeletor, like as as a pop thing. They want to put him. They want to. They don't want to just call it Skeletor cereal. They want to make something cool. Like what was that guy that did all those like record. What was it? The, the he did all those like record covers in his art style, like his fake record covers, and then I think he did cereals too. Like, there's so many artists that do so many cool cereal boxes out there of all these like Thulu O's and all those things, and there's so much inspiration and art involved in all of them. And then you get these, but like I don't know. That's just the thing is like it's they're not, none of, none of it is inspired in any way. It's just product. It's just more product. Like, that's why I'm excited about the DC stuff. I think it looks cool. I think what they did is really awesome. Yeah, so let me read what they sent. So they sent us an email, and then basically saying the DC, um, it's called their Artist Alley series. And basically this is from their convention experiences, going through Artist Alley and seeing what other artists are doing. So what they decided to do is reach out to some of their favorite artists that they saw at some of these conventions, and they're allowing them to... Uh, innovate and put their eccentric spin on DC's most iconic characters. So we're seeing that with the, the exclusive that they're going to have at Designer Con is by an artist named Hooligan, and he did his version of Nightwing. And Nightwing is, from what I can tell, it it's, looks like he's got like a very streetwear appearance. He's got uh, the sneakers on with the varsity jacket, and look, looks nothing like I know of of Nightwing. He looks more like a, more like a street kid in this one. And so, yeah, they're, and Joe Ledbetter, he did a lot of awesome, very cool, like anthropomorphic Batman as an, as an, as an actual bat and penguin as a penguin and Robin as a, as an actual bird. And those look great too. So yeah, I think this, this definitely, they did it in a way that I think fits better into designer con than maybe Funko did. No, for sure. Even like that. And it's the, um, one with, clutter 
or I guess uh, what is what is Josh's name? <laughs> I always forget. <laughs> Josh's name is Josh. No, no, no. His American <laughs> Gross. His his pseudonym <laughs> thing that he tries to hide behind. But they've got that crazy double cast skeleton Batman thing, and that yeah. I mean, it's totally makes sense for our scene. It's yeah. a crazy cool scene. So. I agree. I feel like they've done it right. And it's just like what we were talking about Gary last week or whatever. I don't know if it was last week. I can't remember anymore. But when we were talking about licensed pieces and how to do it right versus how to do it wrong, and I think these have definitely been done right. Now, we've seen yeah. a th- we've seen a thousand Mickey Mouses come in and out of this yeah. designer toy scene. Have you guys I was seen about to bring that up. Have you seen James Jean's versions of Mickey Mouse and Minnie? Uh, no. You haven't? James Jean. Who's James Jean? Am I being dumb for not knowing? You probably sound like what I sound like when I said who's Jermaine Rogers. I know who he is, but I don't know. Or when you both said what's complex, Con. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, now. Come on. I can't. Oh, my God. These two. We don't live in L.A. We don't collect shoes, and I don't listen to hip hop. Like, why would I know that convention? (laughs) We don't either, but we know what it is. Because you live in L.A. and you're friends with Ben. I know what it is, too. I live in New York. All right. Screw you both. You know, Gary and I clearly <laughs> are very York is cool. Uh, that's true. We're, we're from really... the streets. Yeah. Right. We're not cool and urban and, you know, we're just right. not cool. And... Well, who's George. James James Jean? Because I really don't know. James Jean is a very talented illustrator and painter. Uh, he went to SVA here in New York, my alma mater, and uh, he's had a lot, a lot of gallery shows and a lot of installations and done some beautiful work. And he's collaborating now with uh i don't know who put this out good smile company i think yeah good and smile company it says doing a mickey and a mini i think there's a larger version that's uh sort of a porcelain finish and then a set of uh six smaller vinyl ones right but that porcelain larger version that's gonna set you back some money it was 1500 bucks for that set yeah. yeah, and the the four inch ones, which are I actually like them more because they're more colorful. They're vinyl, and they don't require bases to stand, which Teresa and I are always picking on. But you can get that entire set of the four inch figures for you get six figures for sixty bucks. Yeah, I like the porcelain ones a lot. I feel like that blue wash they have really looked like his his beautiful underpaintings. Yeah, I can see where you're saying. Yeah, that. but you're gonna pay. For yeah, that. I'm looking at it now. These are really really cool. I didn't realize Good Smile Company did stuff like this. I've only really known them for those Nenadroids, the little mini posable, um, like anime or Disney or whatever. I didn't realize they did other stuff like this. It's almost it almost reminds me of people like when people make flowers out of fondant for cakes. I can see that and like layer stuff together. I have zero. They're just- <laughs> <What? laughs> so beautiful. Yeah, George. I, I mean, they're not they're not for me, but I think as far as like allowing James Sheen to do his interpretation of Mickey and Minnie, I think it's extremely well executed compared to the, most of the other stuff I see out there that's Mickey based. That's it. There you go. <laughs> I don't I don't know how to add to it because I don't know him enough to know what his stuff uh, looks like. I, do, do yourself a favor and look it up, and yeah, I mean, if you have it, it's it's really beautiful stuff. I just don't. I, think it's cool. I don't need a giant Mickey. I don't need any expensive Mickey. I don't <laughs> care about Mickey one bit. One bit. Can we have people stop making Mickey Mouse? Nope. Amen. Never. Yes. I'm, the next thing I'm doing, I'm sculpting a Mickey. It's gonna have a skull. Oh. It's gonna be a Mickey with a giant skull for a body, and then a big eyeball for a head with the two Mickey ears. <laughs> what? Else? And then it'll have a monkey. It'll be a monkey tail. And then what else do people like? They like when you take the nose and make that the penis and then put two, like, their eyes down for the balls, apparently. There we go. So I have a Mickey with half the... of it skeleton. So it'll be, half, it'll be half skull, eyeball, Mickey ears, and then half skeleton version of all those things. <laughs> I, cool. I, I kind of love this. Can you please take all the crazy things from our scene and mash it up and make a big, I mean, let's do this. Um, sell like hotcakes. Instant sellout. You just yeah. gave away the formula on how to make a designer toy, George. But then I'll also make a small three and three quarter version, and I'll cart it, and DKE will sell it at Comic Con. <laughs> bootleg yourself. Exactly. <laughs> so, Lucas, do you like toys? Yeah. So do I. And my office has tons of toys in it, doesn't it? And do you know where I get those toys? Um. 
from your friends and um, stores and you make them. True, but I also get some from our sponsors. And do you know who our sponsors are? Strange Cat Toys and Freedy Retro. That's right. And if you go to Strange Cat Toys, be sure to load up that cart and use our promo code MARSHAM at checkout and you'll receive 10% off your entire order. And so, Lucas, what is Daddy always looking at when he looks at his phone? Toys. And where do I see all these great toys? Social media. <laughs> That's right. For all the latest and greatest designer toy news, be sure to like and follow... SpankySpoke.com Close. Try it one more time. SpankySpoke.com Perfect. And who else? And the Toy Chronicle. Dot com. Dot com. And be sure to download the Toy Chronicles app at any one of your favorite app stores. Thanks, Lucas. Actually, come here. Rowan, I want to get you in here. Rowan's my four-year-old. So, Rowan, come here. How about? Repeat after me. Please support. Please support. support our sponsors. Our sponsors. So that my dad. So that so my, my dad. dad can buy, can buy, buy us more toys. Us more toys. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so let's get back to it. So last episode, we talked about the Jurassic Park uh, thing going on at Designer Con. It's being, I think it's part of Universal, and I believe there's going to be some sort of art exhibition going on. And we were talking a little bit about the toys and how I didn't feel that the toys needed to be... Uh, license out to Jurassic Park that felt weird to me. I don't. I still don't understand why someone would pay thousands of dollars for a Jurassic Park license for dinosaur toys. You don't need it. But I don't want to get into all of that again. But George, do you know anything about the art show that's going on at that booth? Because I, I haven't seen that much on it, and I, I think that's going to be a big part of DesignerCon. Uh, I, I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. I'm, I'm not part of the uh, art show part of it. All I know is that there's some kind of an art show that you know. I think Universal is putting that part together. I think. I think that they reached out to artists to get to to have different artists do different Universal Jurassic Park type. I've yeah, only I've seen, seen one. Th- I've seen one artist post an, an image, and it was Kano showing the snowboard that he made, and it looks awesome. It's a uh, it's a snowboard with a giant T Rex on it, and it looks very I believe, cool. I believe that's a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a snowboard in his hands, but Kano's just snow. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, be oh, nice. he was doing that thing where you kind of hold the the skateboard, but you hold it closer to the the camera, I guess. Like when you catch a small fish and you hold it really close to the camera to make it look big. <laughs> that that's exactly what it was. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's really the only other thing I've seen him. But again, that's a mass produced thing. It's being done by Madrid Skateboards in conjunction with Jurassic Park. Well, did you see the uh, the Nightshows dinosaur and uh, I think Juan Yunez did so that's, character as well. Yeah, those are the two that we're talking about that are licensed, no, actually mass produced it, toys. And we haven't yeah. seen that. We haven't seen who the third artist is, but that's what I'm talking about. It's like, I just I didn't understand why pay for the license for those. They just weren't that outlandish well, what's, what's, to me. What's more attractive, come to the Jurassic Park anniversary show or come to the giant dinosaur booth? <laughs> that's the same to me. Like, Gary, if I called you and I was like, I'm doing a show about dinosaurs, go. Like, would you be inspired? Or was it, I was like, oh, it's Jurassic Park. See what you can put, what kind of spin you can put on that. But no one's doing a Jurassic Park spin. They're just doing dinosaurs. They're all doing T-Rex. I'm not seeing anything Jurassic Park. Andrew, if you, instead of doing your next cereal, it should be T-Rex O. So it's going to be T-Rex and the bowl of cereal has the ripples in the milk. And if you did that as your art piece for the Jurassic Park art show, I'd say, yeah, Andrew did a Jurassic Park version. But the Nitro's dinosaur, that was on the mural way, the wall mural way before. And they're just now, eh, it's a T-Rex. It's just slapped the Jurassic Park la- you know, logo on it. And the same thing with the Juan Munez. You like that, Teresa? Juan? <laughs> that was the worst pronunciation. <laughs> no, it's Juan. Like, I don't understand Juan, all right, fine, Juan. His... Juan. I, I, it's just, a, it's just a, his thing in a T-Rex suit. I don't see anything. What? Even Kano's board. It's Kano's style of a dinosaur with the Jurassic Park logo just on it, and I don't yeah, get it. Yeah, he's not doing, that's what I mean. He's not doing anything Jurassic Park-ish. He's doing a dinosaur. 
But maybe, but maybe I'm weird. No, I get, but I get what you're saying, Andrew, that by putting it under the Jurassic Park umbrella, it kind of brings it together. And it sounds, I guess, a little cooler. I have like a 25th anniversary show to celebrate around it. But it's still weird to me to see the Jurassic Park's logo and branding tagged in this stuff. And it just someone st- better, someone else better do another dinosaur. Otherwise, it's just going to be a T-Rex show. Amen. I, I well, can say the, the third figure that has not been shown yet is not a T-Rex. Oh, thank God. Ooh. Well, that's what I was going to ask. So there's the figures. So there's also different skate decks being produced. It just says, we are excited to present one of the awesome official skate decks. Oh. Yeah, there was also a skate deck that Scott uh, designed that's not a Jurassic Park. It's just a decon deck. That was on his, that was on his Instagram today. I'm just wondering well, how many segments there are, Gary, because we've. I know there's still going to be custom stuff too, like just. And that's what I'm saying. We're, at the time of this record, it's really only seven days away, and we haven't seen any leaks from these artists that are that did one-offs or customs or paintings. We've seen sprinklings of the mass-produced stuff, but as far still as the. Doing it. <laughs> I, I was literally before we started recording, just starting painting the things I'm bringing for Econ. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not done yet either. You know, I have a custom to do for the Sad Salesman <laughs> custom show, and it's still sitting. It's still sitting there in primer. Oh my god, you all are slackers! <laughs> hey, collector, don't judge us, artists. We're trying no, to do this stuff for you. Me, do you all realize? Do you all realize how stressful it is sitting here? Not like I have no ability to plan. I have yeah, a whole lot of for us to not have the thing done yet. <laughs> we, we still have to make them. <laughs> <laughs> I got to pay for that plane uh, ticket. Exactly. <laughs> like Andrew probably still has to hand paint 10 of those resins, and he's wasting two hours of his night talking to us. That is not inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to see your uh, fiance Becky at all this week? Um, Not much. <laughs> no. <laughs> is she coming? Decon? She is. She's coming out this year, yeah. Woo! George is the president oh, yeah. of the uh, anti Garyham fan club going to be there? Yeah, she'll be there. She's going to be running the booth? Uh, she'll be helping at the booth. She she works Friday, so she won't be there until late Friday night, but she'll be there Friday night and then Saturday, Sunday with me. Okay. A listener nice. wanted to know, because this week we were you know, proposing to our Stomping Ground or Facebook group tips that you have as, a, as an attendee for vendors, and one of the tips was have a big, giant banner so people can see you. And, George, you mentioned you don't have one. Are you working on yeah, that one? Yeah, I don't one? have a banner. You're not going to work on it? You're not going to have one in time? No, nah. nah. I don't. I'm not. A, I don't. I'm not a graphic designer at all. I I know zero. Like, I have zero graphic abilities, and I just I look at I look at the template for making a banner, and I'm just like, well, there it is, and I just. I've got an idea, can George. You? you can sculpt a banner. <laughs> that, that would be nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be pretty sweet, and you could sell it. You could have your banner for sale. It live sculpt your banner. <laughs> oh yeah! It's an event. <laughs> Sell tickets. Did anybody no. happen to see uh, Suck Lord make his cameo appearance on the Goldbergs last night? I saw pictures on I Instagram, don't... but I haven't watched the show. No, I've never actually seen it. But someone in our group he uh, filmed it, so I actually got to see the segment. It's a very, it's, you know, very short little segment, but it's very, that's awesome for Suck Lord. That's cool. He was a Toys R Us employee helping out the kid on the show with, uh, I think, a, a GoBot purchase. Did he have his normal suck lord like, yo, what's going on? What are you looking for? Not so much. There was still right. there was still an attitude, but not like full suck lord. Nice. But he was wearing the Toys R Us badge and everything. It was a good little cameo. It was perfect for him. Yeah, that's really cool. And then they had a bunch of our scenes guys like toys hanging on the shelf from what I've seen on Instagram. Oh, like in the background, like a bunch of bootlegs? Yeah, it was a ton of bootleg figures from all the guys, the bootleg guys in the scene. God, you know, I didn't even catch that. I'll have to go back and look. I guess there's like the whole wall of figure of action figures next to him, and the scene is like all that, all those guys' stuff. Huh. If you go look at like DKE's Instagram, there's a there's a picture from the show, and then he tagged all the artists in this in the thing, so you can look at all the different artists that are in it. Do I should I be watching the Goldbergs? I've never watched it. I think you were born after the Goldbergs' time. I don't think you'd get the references. 
It's based on being like oh, an 80s kid. You know, there was a 70s show. This is like for the 80s generation. And, well, that's why. See, I haven't even watched Stranger Things. Ugh. I don't even know who you are. Yeah, I think you wouldn't get I the tried... right Okay, I was just curious. I hadn't heard of it. No, I tried Gary, but it's, it was kind of creepy. That monster thing. I couldn't even get through the first episode. What about <laughs> have, have you watched Goonies yet? That was our movie suggestion for oh you. Oh my gosh! Okay, so I have I have borrowed the Blu-ray from a coworker, but I have not watched it yet. I'm sorry. I will I will promise to watch it before our last episode so that we can discuss it. Our last episode? We have a last episode coming up. <laughs> Is there a last episode? <laughs> Is there or... something you no! want to share with us? Sorry, sorry. Oh, thank God. Last episode. <laughs> Of the year. <laughs> oh, of the I season. mean, last episode of the year, okay. which is coming up. The- we got so this this episode. Then we're taking next week off because there's Designer Con, and then we're probably going to take up that take off that next week because that's Thanksgiving week. So then a two week break. Then we'll come back for maybe one or two episodes in December, and then we're going to go on winter break, baby. We should record one at Designer Con in person. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to work when I'm there, George. Dad. Yeah, how are we going to pull that off? I got a Zoom microphone. Okay. Recorder. I don't... Good luck getting me to participate. I'm going to be running around buying stuff. I don't mean during the show. We have all night. We're all going to be staying down there. <laughs> oh, you mean like go like grab someone episode. and sit down and chat? Yeah. Hmm. We could. It would be fun to get some of the people that are really hard to get. Or do like mini, mini episodes, right, like 10 you're, minutes. Now you're talking too much work. I just meant the three of us sit down and talk about <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I get it now. You just want to say like, oh, gosh, let's talk about today and what it was like right then and there. Well, because to the people listening, they don't understand that we're nowhere near each other. The three of us don't. I mean, most people will probably know because they know us. But if anyone's listening that doesn't know us, we're in three different states. So we're not. You know, we're nowhere near each other. We don't talk to each other in person. Like, so having an episode in person where we're sitting down, having an actual conversation would be interesting. That would be weird, actually, because we don't do this by video or anything. It's strictly audio. So to actually see your eye rolls and your facial expressions in person, that'd be weird. Just see me tune out half the time and just, like, start wandering. Yep. I'm, I, that's exactly how I picture it, too. <laughs> you, you just mute it and go do your other thing. I know. Oh, well, it gets real. It gets real quiet for you sometimes. I can tell you're off doing something else. Oh yeah, I mute it a lot. <laughs> I won't lie, I mute too, Gary. Oh There's my times god! I go, go take. Hey, sometimes you need a bathroom break, or Bailey needs to go out, or I grab some water or a snack. Yeah. You leave the room. At least I sit here and like listen. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, yeah, get up and move around. Y'all don't notice. Y'all, you didn't know. I think Andrew's <laughs> on, muted us all now. Yes, he's. I know Andrew he's probably off. peaced out. Maybe he's in the bathroom. He's out spray masking <laughs> right now. So I des- left like an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do some designer con talk. It is coming up. It is in a few days from the time of this release. What are you doing? Wait, we're gonna start talking. Designer we con? barely <laughs> touched on it. What are you guys excited for? It's I- been an hour and a half. <laughs> all right, Andrew. What are you looking forward to? Any like any any releases? Any like big booths? overseas, you know, companies coming over. What are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to uh, Chris Lee's Rhino Beetle. Have you seen that? He's been posting some work in progress yeah. pictures. Yes. Yeah, and if you know Chris, you know it's going to be uh, it's gonna be perfect and beautiful. And it's, it's such a great little character. It has so much personality. It's, it's pretty simple, but it's, it's, it's gorgeous. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Um, then there's a, there's a couple of artists from Canada. They don't do much. I've just seen them at DesignerCon. I don't know what else they do outside of it. They're called uh, Wendigo Toys. I think I've mentioned them before. Yep. Uh, they just make, they make some weird little resin stuff that I like. They're, this year they have basically a nipple with a hat on and uh, a plague doctor on vacation. It's like a plague doctor with a camera and a Hawaiian shirt. Okay. Uh, just some, some random weird stuff. So I'm looking forward to checking that out in person. He lost me at nipple with a hat. Oh, it's pretty uh, adorable. <laughs> I'm trying to find it. Well, are they on Instagram? When yeah, to go toys. When to go toys. When to go toys. Mr. Up. Zipple. <laughs> Mr. Zipple. Yeah. There's a video of them uh, popping one out of a mold, and I think they might actually have used a 3D printed mold for that one too, which is, is kind of interesting. Oh, it's an actual. Oh, it doesn't, okay, that doesn't look like a nipple. Wait till the hat's off. Look at the video. Literally, watch the video. Oh. Where's oh my god, video? it's amazing. I need one of these. 
watch the video of it being popped out of the mold? Yeah, it's the, yeah. right underneath the black hatted one. All right, let's see. It's amazing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's a nipple. I do like the face. I like that the I'm hat kinda... just, like, fits right on him. Perfect, yeah. I know. That's actually kind of cute. You all probably shouldn't have told me and just told me there was something cute I should go look at, and I would have bought it and then found out later what it really was. <laughs> you could still buy it. It's got a hat on. It's true. Just hat on. Just... It's, it's kind of like with that uh, Tanuki figure. Like, we had not talked about it. I would just been like, oh, he's like sitting on a rock or like a little stump or something. That's what I'm saying. That's how they get you. Know you. And then you get home three <laughs> days later and realize what, realize what you really bought. Yeah. George, what are you excited for, Designer Con? I haven't looked at anything. I don't Jesus know. Christ. Teresa. Give me one sec. Sorry. <laughs> you talk about what you're interested in seeing, and then I'll come back. Okay. Uh, I'm still waiting. I, I Really, I'm still waiting. I'm anticipating seeing a lot of news drop next week, but I have seen some pretty cool things this week, and one thing I'm probably going to try to pick up is the pearl green Uwamu Dino over at the My Plastic Heart booth. That looks re- really good. I'm looking forward to what how I haven't seen anything yet, but what How to Work is going to be bringing. They're coming over from I believe Hong Kong. They're they represent and man- manufacture the Labubu toys with Kossing Lung. So hopefully I can get my hands on some of that stuff. Another company coming over from Hong Kong is called Awesome Toys. I believe they're a brand, but also like a type of store that represents a lot of their artists. And one of the brands that they represent is called Pointless Island. And I love all their stuff. They're very vintage looking. They almost look like the Richard Scarry uh, characters coming out of the Busy Busy Town books and whatnot. So they're like animals and overalls and stuff like that. So I'm hoping to pick up the three little pigs and maybe the frogs and the bears. I would love all of it really. But otherwise, I'm still waiting to see a bunch of news and I'll hang on till next week. Yeah. That's, oh, I know. That's truthfully. Oh, go ahead. There is. Uh... I always like going to the Muju booth, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the Muju World stuff. Oh, yeah. Yes. There's a new character they had sculpted for a custom piece, the Jermaine Rogers show for New York Comic Con, and um, through Martian Toys. But there was a sitting character they had done. I don't know if you saw it, George, but it was seated and kind of smiley face, kind of looking up with the arms behind its back. And uh, I think she's making a few more of those for designer cons. So I'm hoping that I can go check those out. Oh, nice. But yeah, I, I'm kind of with you, Gary. Like, I'm kind of waiting for the flood works of stuff that I can kind of peruse through and, and work to make my list. I have a spreadsheet started, but <laughs> I don't really have much in it yet. Um, obviously, I'm always hitting up Chris and Amanda's booth. Uh, to check out what they have, but um, I don't know. Like there is going to be a seedless drop. There's going to be a new colorway of that. So uh, the Shoko seedless. We got the white ones at uh, five points, but there's going to be a really cute rainbowy pink one um, at Designer Con. So I'm hoping to be able to get that. Unbox did release a giant list of all these things they're going to bring, and I just I, I, their booth is one of those things where. Goodness knows what they're going to have, so I feel like you just got to go and just see what see what's what. Yep. But, yeah, I don't know. It's it's tricky. I think, you know, for me, the Metacom booth, I know we're still waiting on a lot of news, but I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Teresa Chiba is going to be there in person, and I think she talked about doing some live paintings at the booth, which could be really cool. And then Kanatsu actually said that she's going to be designer con as well. I'm not entirely sure if it's related to Metacom or not, but I have yet to meet her, and it's always really, really hard to get her stuff. We talked about that with Kat, so I'm hoping she'll be bringing some cool things, and it might be that chance to get some of those rare items from her that are typically really hard to get, so... Right. I don't know. I'm sure. I feel like in the moment, I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna buy left and right, but in this moment, right now, I feel very unprepared. Like I have no idea. Are you st- are you stressed about it? You sound stressed. I'm super stressed. I don't like. It's very, and I get it. Like everyone's working still and finishing their pieces, and they're not gonna. They, they <laughs> can't even take pictures yet of the things they've done. But it makes it hard to plan and prepare. So I'm sitting here. Like, I'm not ready. I don't know what I'm buying. I don't know what we're doing. 
And I think I get in town on Thursday and I feel like you're going to be like, I can't, I had to stay back at the hotel and make my list. Oh uh, no, no, <laughs> no, I won't be like that. But it, I think part of also the, the little bit of stress is the preview night aspect and I'm struggling and I'm hoping people will publish it, like provide more information booth by booth, but it's hard for me to know which booths will treat it like a preview night, meaning they're not going to sell anything. And which ones will start selling product? Because I could see me writing this list of all these awesome things, but watch all these booths I'm going up to. They're like, oh, no, not selling it. Oh, no, not selling it. And I went around all these booths, and suddenly I start going down my list, and I miss out on something else because they were one of the few selling. Let's ask Andrew about that. I know at Five Points Fest you had your exclusive colorway of your Kill Cat there, Andrew. And the, on Saturday they sell out in the first – what, 30 minutes or something like that, and you had to reserve stock for Sunday. How hard is it for you as someone who dropped, you know, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on something not to be able just to just sell to people when they're there and then wanting it? So, like, on a Friday night, you want your stock to last for Saturday attendees and Sunday attendees, but is it hard to, like, reserve to say, hey, I'm only going to have 20 on Friday night, and then, like, how is that for you as a, as a vendor? Yeah. I mean, that's tough, especially when – like something like uh, San Diego when people can only get passes for certain days and they're like, Oh, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I can't come back for it. But I, I try to do my best to front load it a bit. So I'll have more the first couple of days, but I'll save fewer and fewer for the subsequent days. So if I have like 30 for the first day, I'll maybe have 15 for the second day. So just, just to give everyone at least some chance. So if they really want it, they can come in early the next day and grab it. But right. it's, yeah, it's, it's against your instincts to not sell everything you have as quickly as possible. You ever get one of those stories where someone's like, oh, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, and then you see them there tomorrow? <laughs> uh, possibly, but I, <laughs> you see so many people, it's hard to keep track of everyone that yeah. says they're going to buy something. <laughs> now, what are you going to do about preview night? Are you going to treat it like a preview and just let people look? Or it's are not, you going to sell like one of your, t- you know, your resin pieces? So if 10 people came and wanted to buy them out, you'd let them. Uh, I've never known a preview night where people aren't selling stuff. You know, it's, I, don't even I think, think they're it's, calling a, it it's a misnomer. Yeah. yeah. I think it's basically at least like you get in early, but I'm not going to sell them all. I, you know, I also, I want stuff to have on display for the main day when someone comes in. So, you know, if I have uh 40 of my green tea kill cats, I'm not going to sell them all on preview night. I, I will sell a few on preview night and then I'll sell, save the majority of them for the first major day. Sell them all. What all are you bringing? <laughs> That's all I, was gonna, I was just going to ask what he's bringing too. Cause I know you just sold that. Banana Kill Cat through Nerdy Collectibles, but is there another one that's about to come for Decon? There might be something big. We'll see. Oh, so big. vague. <laughs> I'll, I'll also I'll be bringing some uh, Green Tea Kill Cats. Uh, this is my last public release chance to get them in person. I think I'll have about forty or fifty of them in total. Okay. Uh, Tomonosuke is going to have a couple of the Sake Kill Cats over their booth too. Oh, cool! I know that was a popular uh, one. Yeah, yeah. No, and then, well, they've uh, all been popular. They've, they're all selling out, so they're all hard to Yeah, get. they've all been doing really, really well, so that's it's awesome. And then uh, yeah, just a mixture of a few things, new pins, some sculptures, and uh, a few surprises. We'll see. Are you sharing with my plastic card again this year? Are you, are you just like back-to-back booze? Or, I know uh, yeah, we're just, like... next, we're just next to each other. Okay. Yeah, we're over, I'm, at, I'm at booth 108 if anyone wants to come find me. Maybe. I might stop by Over by the Medicom oh, line booth. The witch booth? What? <laughs> Over by the Medicom line booth. Just <laughs> oh. oh, good lord! Yeah, it's not. It's not that close. It should be alright. Hey, traffic. You'll get good foot traffic. Yeah. I oh, know. Teresa, how many lactose boxes should I uh, save for you? I want like half of them. Oh. Okay, no problem. But are um, Andrew, are any of your Kill Cats open edition? Yeah, the uh, the chocolate, the regular chocolate one with the dark chocolate chase is a, is an open edition. Okay. It going to be any of those there? Yes. Yeah. I'll have some of those. Cool. Sweet. Who's going to the party on Saturday night? Me. Yeah. You're going <laughs> to metal. Have fun. Me. Nobody else. What a lovely party. Last year it was free booze. So I don't know how that's going to be this year. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not going to be free, but it's probably not going to be free. But I like, but I like at the party. Is George gonna be with you? He's 
Undetermined. <laughs> He's coming with me, but not at his own. <laughs> Apparently, I'll be at the party. <laughs> <laughs> is is anyone going to Disneyland while they're in town? Oh no. <laughs> no. Did someone say probably? probably? Yeah, I think I was going on Monday. Well, I've never been, so You're gonna see you're gonna experience it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You never been to a Disneyland? Uh, that one. I, I haven't. <laughs> wow. I've I've been to Disney World when I was a kid and I've been to Disney Sea, which was great. Huh. You sound just like me. I've been to the one in Florida once, and then that's it. What's Disney Sea? Disney is in Tokyo. It's uh, it's it their like own kind world? of unique. Uh, it's it's got kind of a smaller copy of Disneyland next to it, or maybe it's the same size. But uh, Disney Sea is its own huge thing. It's it's pretty amazing. It's got a big volcano in the middle of it that erupts every now and then. Is that the one that has like the Nemo stuff and all that? That's... Yeah, yeah, it's got the Nemo ride. Okay. So as far as us, we're not doing a Marsham meetup. It was awesome last year, but with the relocation, it just it just felt strange doing one. I think everyone's just going to be going to downtown Disney and the Chevy Metal Party and all that stuff instead. You know, there is bowl, there is bowling right there too in downtown Disney now. Cool. All right, we'll just do that instead, maybe. You can make reservations. Yeah, you got to make reservations. It's oh. hipster. Mm. It's really fun bowling. It's hipster bowling. It's expensive. Don't eat there. Just bowl. <laughs> but, um, well, we'll play it by ear. But it's it's a very um how do you say like when it's like pers- it's very personable like hipster. Okay. It's not the no <laughs> word. What about what about that VR Star Wars thing? Is that still there? The you got to make yeah. you got to make reservation a- for that as well. God. Man. What can we do when we're there? Um we I can think- drive to Pasadena. There's a <laughs> I want to go down to the beach, but I don't think it's going to happen. You have to make reservations. <laughs> <laughs> Anders just throwing out the zingers. Yeah. But Teresa, I know you mentioned something about if you ha- have a badge for Designer Con, you get discounts at a bunch of different places. Why don't you tell us more about that? Any Designer Con badge, um, yeah, and I can we'll share a link in our list. But um, the yeah, there's a, a whole bunch of places where you can show your badge and save money, like percentage off or, I don't know, like two for one and all that kind of stuff. And it's a pretty long list. So, yeah, that was a nice surprise. Thing. Ben did a good job reaching out to the local businesses, yeah. setting that up. Yeah, for sure. So, for those of us who aren't from the area, like some of the stuff on the list is like change, right? So, like McDonald's and IHOP. And like whenever I go to uh, like travel and stuff, I always try to eat at places that I don't have here. This is no fun. Like I can eat at McDonald's wherever. So are you all, is anyone familiar with these lists? Like, is there anyone on here that's like you'd recommend checking out? Everything in that area is for tourists. Yeah. It's, a, it's just a tourist trap area. So don't expect anything cool. How far do you have to go away from Disneyland to get to the more decent mom and pop restaurants and sort of stuff? Is it, Five so, miles away, or is it just like a couple blocks on the outskirts? I know the area just a little bit, but if you go to Orange, which is maybe 10, it's not very far, but there's like a downtown Orange, it's like a city, and uh, that's a really mom and pop. It's kind of like based around this um, traffic circle, and they have, well, they have like oh, a- it's like the mall shop there and all that? Yeah, yeah, and there's like real, that's a really mom and pop, like old town kind of vibes, like really cute houses, and it's not far away, but that's like the only thing, because if you go to Fullerton, you hit College City- just stay, just stay there and eat your dumb tourist. Or go to Orange, it's Orange, <laughs> Orange like, like the or like old downtown Orange is really fun. It's okay. really uh, cute. Just go to space. Rainforest Cafe and be a tourist. <laughs> yes, they closed it. All right, forget Rainforest Cafe; it's gone. <laughs> Medieval Times Diner <laughs> or Dinner Kitchen. Actually, there's the best meat sandwiches you're ever going to get at Portillo's, which is. Oh, yeah not too far away it's a chicago chain and we only have one out here yeah um, we, have, we have them here oh you do yep we have uh, I've never heard of it. portillo's it's so good <laughs> it's it's pretty good i've had it too much so it doesn't interest me anymore but it's it's a lot of uh just american diner type food uh really good beef sandwiches like george mentioned shakes hot dogs burgers just american fare 
I know when designer con was in uh, Pasadena, a lot of people would just go to a place called the Doghouse afterwards. So Portillo's is probably going to be your closest bet to that place. So uh, it's too far. No one's going to because no one's going to have a car. Oh. To be, it's it's far enough that you can't just walk there. Uh, it's Coco's this year. All right. See everybody at Tortilla Joe's. <laughs> At the bowling alley, <laughs> and that where the, whatever that place in uh, downtown Disney that makes the awesome beignets. It's like a a New Orleans jazz type oh, restaurant. Yes, jazz kitchen. Jazz kitchen. Oh, their beignets are awesome. Um. All right, we're wasting Andrew's time. He should be painting, getting to work. Andrew, <laughs> what about thanks for George's time. What about my time? <laughs> oh, come on! You're gonna go watch whatever Netflix shows on right now. What is it? The The Witch. Sabrina the Witch. I already How finished dare it. You? We finished it. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you, Gary. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, so this will just wrap this thing up, so we can all get back to work. So Andrew, thanks again for joining, and we'll see you. Well, I'll see everyone in four days at DesignerCon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. So why don't you take a brief moment, Andrew, and let all of our listeners know where they can find you on the interwebs and at DesignerCon. Uh, you can find me on the interwebs at deadzebra.com on Instagram as deadzebra inc or also at uh, creaturesinmyhead.com and at designercon I'm deadzebra booth 108 okay Teresa where are you going to be well if you all want to find me on Instagram uh, my username is tmhawk24 and designercon I'm a traveling booth so if you recognize me say hi I'm terrible with faces and names so Please don't feel sad if I don't know who you are, but tell me who you are, and it'll be awesome. Okay, George time. Do your thing. I'm at Double G Toys on Instagram, and I've also finally started an online shop. So it's doubleGtoys.storeenvy.com, and I'll be oh. at booth 2628. Oh, like three miles away. Perfect. Three miles away from you, <laughs> 2628. What are you selling at this online shop? Uh, I've been going through archive stock, so a bunch of my personal stock that I've had that I've kept of a lot of the minifigures I made, stuff I sculpted over the years. Um, just putting up the old archive stock, uh, archive stock up, and um, I have a new figure coming for Designer Con, so I'll be putting that up in the store after Designer Con. Oh, a new figure! Looking forward to seeing what you got cooking up. Uh, you can find me at Gary Ham on Instagram or superham.com. This has been the Marsham Toy Hour. We do this every week. Not because we have to. But because we want to. Want to. <laughs> forced to. <laughs> <laughs> you are not forced. Nobody's forced. Um, so, until our next transmission, we are signing off. Bye. Bye. Oh.